Welcome to this course about how to start your online business and sell from China in five easy steps. The purpose of this course is to give you the basic knowledge about how to start your online business. It will cover key topics like how to find your niche market, how to source products from China, and how to sell them. So this course has the only purpose to help you start with the right foot. By the end of this course, you will have basic knowledge to kick off your online business and start selling from China. Super great that you want to start your online shop, your online store. But the very first step that you need to do is to select the domain name. And this is very, very important because it's one of the way that people are going to find you online and it's the way you're going to use all your marketing. And of course, how easy it will be for your customers to identify your services of your products. So the most important thing that you need to remember when you select the name is that it has to be short and it has to be also easy to spell and easy to remember. One example is the name of my website. The name of my website is Olingoco because that's actually the name of the company, Olingoco. It's easy to remember and it's very short. You also, you also need to consider the budget because you need to ask yourself the question, how much money do you have available monthly or yearly to spend on website hosting and domain? This is an example of a regular shop. When you go and you open a physical shop, you think first on the location and you also think about how you're going to name it and how big it's going to be and all of that. In here, is the same. You need to think about how much you're going to pay for your rent. You need to much how much you're going to pay for your registration of your name. So those are the basic questions that you need to answer. Depending on the money that you want to spend, you might get some services and you might not get other services. So I'm giving you some options that you can see down below on the on this unit about the three that I recommend and the cost that they have currently. To select some of them can be quite tough. So what are the key features that I recommend you to consider when you're going to select your domain? The first thing is that you need to consider, of course, like I mentioned before, is the cost. Then you need to consider customer support. How much time also do you have to invest on designing your website? For example, uh, GoDaddy only provides domain service. You might need extra help in order to design your website. They don't have website builder available. The same happens with Bluehost, which are popular. The difference with WordPress is that they do offer both at the same time, the domain and website builder. If you are not an expert in building websites from zero, like from scratch with HTML, probably WordPress will be a good choice. Please also consider that these three options that I'm giving you are all available in China. So you do not need a VPN in order to access to them. Because right now you're starting and you might not have a lot of budget. What you want to focus is on reliability that is affordable and that you can manage to build your website in a nice way and it will be easier for your customers to find it in an organic way. So remember, is it cheap? Does it have technical support? And all of the things of services that they offer will cover my needs. I host my website on WordPress. And the reason why I host on WordPress is because they have very good customer support. When I have any issue with my website, I can just message them or you can call them and they will reply right away. They they are affordable and I can have both my domain and my web hosting there. Uh, if I go to the GoDaddy, I will need to find a web hosting differently than GoDaddy. If I go to Bluehost, I will need to find a different web hosting. If you already have a domain name, you can transfer that to WordPress or to other web hosting services. So these are the very, very basic first questions you need to ask when you're starting your online shop. The name of your shop, which will be www.name.com. By the way, I always recommend you to use .com instead of .org, .net, or .something else if you want to be more international. And if they have available tools to design your own website without you needing to know a lot about websites. Now, if you're looking to set up an e-commerce store, or uh, there are a few options out there that are quite popular. And in this course, we're going to focus on the three most popular ones that a lot of you might be wondering, or probably you're already doing. The first one is Shopify. The second one is WooCommerce. And the third one is Amazon FBA. These are the three most popular ones that we're going to cover in the basics of this. Shopify from China is actually not as difficult as it might look like. 
And in this unit, I'm going to break it down in six simple steps on how you can start your online shop using Shopify. This is the Shopify website, and I'm not using any kind of VPN to have access to the website. So as you can see, you can definitely have access to it, and you should be able to use this without any issue if you don't have any kind of VPN, or sometimes your VPN can not work like sometimes it happens. The very first step is to, to start your Shopify shop is to choose the plan that you would like to use. There are three different plans available, and each one of them has their own features and pricing points. The basic plan, as you can see, has is $20 a month. The Shopify plan is $49 a month, and the advance is $299. So you can go to the cheaper version or to the very expensive version. Of course, I would recommend you to go for the basic version if you are just starting out. As you can see the difference, you will have basic reports, professional reports, comps reports builder. This is based on the performance of your shop. You can have two staff accounts. That means that it's going to be you and the piece, another person that might be able to help you. And of course, up to four inventory locations. One of the things about Shopify is that you can also do drop shipping. So if you are doing drop shipping, you might not need to have inventory. You can compare the plans and you can have some alternative solutions as well, where you can sell through social media or you can have Shopify Plus, which is $2,000. But this is for things that are way more advanced and people have more, more experience using them. Something that I also want you to know is that you can try for free. And I want to go through the steps with you. So what are we going to do? We are going to focus on online store. Which one is the best? Well, you know, I'm already starting. You need to start thinking about why you want your shop's name to be. As we talked before, I recommend a short name, easy to remember, and then it's also easy to identify what your shop is about. This is important because it will be the first thing that potential customers see when they visit your site. You want to choose a name that is catchy, memorable, but also reflects all the products and services. As an example, I'm going to sell uh, clothing lines for babies. So we can call it the baby clothing line plus. So they will also show you it's available or not, and it is available. So let's go in next. Where are you business located? Of course, we choose China because we're based in China and you will have to continue with your email. Alert. So here we are. This is our dashboard absolutely for free that we can start. As you can see, here's your trial just started. And well, right now they have a promotion. They start three months of Shopify for $1 a month for the monthly basics. So you can totally try. We're going to pick up a theme. We're going to customize our shop. Okay, so we, are, we can pick some theme. They have some themes that you can buy, but you can also explore the free themes if you still don't want to buy any of them and you're just doing the trial, which I recommend. This is great if you have no knowledge of how to design your website. Let's try it. We add it. We can go to customize. So you can change colors, uh, different photos, or your logo, if you have a logo, and your information. Here's your Canva of your website. It, the design is already there. The theme is already there. And pretty much you only need to fill out the information that you can introduce your brand. You can see how that is. You, can, you have the home catalog contact. It's absolutely easy, super easy to use. You can change replace, remove, or select an image, and you have all this already built. It's super easy to use, and you just need to, you know, play with it. Go around and check the best information that you like. And in here, you will see your products. They will already have the feature collection. The other thing that we need to do is to add our products. We're going to add our products. You add the name of your product, the description of your product. I really suggest you to add everything, all the single information. A photo, if your product is complicated, like electronics or clothing, you want to have models, not just the photo of the clothing. You can have the price. You can even compare certain prices. You can also ask them to charge already the tax of this product and your cost. So when Shopify gives you a report of your shop, you will already know, you already know how much is your profit. Inventory, if you have your own inventory. And if it's a physical product, you can see how much is the the weight of it, so you can start calculating the shipping for the markets that you're going to offer this product. And it's really, really up to you to come to open an account absolutely for free and go around, check everything that Shopify can give to you. This, for example, I find one of the most useful reports because you should be able to see yourselves, best visitors of your shop and the sessions, customers returning to your shop, the conversion rate, 
average add value order, total orders that you can have, how many you sold, and you can even have a budget for marketing. You can even have some marketing's extra help for you by doing Google Ads, Pinterest, email, Snapchat, and all of that. In the home, add a domain. Do we have a domain? Do we want to get it? Do you want to have your only your name and delete my Shopify? Of course, you will need to pay for the plan. But I wanted to show you this part because it's very, very, very important that you see your payments. You need to choose a provider. And this is very tricky if you are in China because when you are in China, you need to have a service that will allow people to pay with credit card. And these are all the things that are available. My recommendation is to use Stripe or to use PayPal. But for both of them, you need to have a business license. You need to have it in order to open these kind of accounts. And once you finish all of these steps that Shopify will guide you one by one, the only thing that you need to do is launch your shop and start doing some marketing to get more customers into your website. And there you have it. That's the free trial in the easiest way to open your shop using Shopify. Now we're going to talk about WooCommerce and this is my personal favorite. And this is because I've been learning about it for the last couple of years. And of course is where my course where you're taking right now is hosted. And I really like it, but I have decided that I will invest the time to really learn how to use it. First, you need to know that WooCommerce is a plugin for WordPress. So you must have a website on WordPress, which is where I have my, my website hosted and also I purchased my domain. So what WooCommerce does? What WooCommerce does is it will turn your website into an e-commerce platform. It's absolutely great because you're already paying for your domain name and you're already paying for your website hosting. Now WooCommerce is for free. They don't charge you for the service. It's just a plugin developed for you to use your WordPress website as an e-commerce platform. To open a WordPress account is very easy. You just need your email and you just need a password. That's it. But you do need premium account. You cannot use the free service, like I mentioned it, to your plugin section. And you will see the plugins available. Who? Commerce. You will see several of the options, several options that are things in order to upgrade and make more complicated according to your services. Since I already, already have it added, it's already shown on my website. You will see it here. It will appear as soon as you select it. You download it, you go to your website, you go to dashboard, plugins, and this is going to be the dashboard of it. You will have your store details. You will have subscriptions if you need it add in your products, set up payments, add taxes rates, and you know they will also help you do marketing, very similar to the way Shopify does. What Shopify has an advantage over WordPress or in WooCommerce is that Shopify already can help you to build your website and everything is in one. In the case of, War of WordPress and WooCommerce, you need to build your website apart from wool covers if you want to make it nicer you can also go for themes and have it very very simple here you will have your orders here you is where you are your products you have direct checkouts and what's important is the settings you need to have everything ready for it you have the address of your store where do you ship you can see the shipping locations the currency the products, you can check every single one of them. Select the way it's going to be. Taxes as well. You can define the taxes that you need to pay according to the country that you are. It's going to be the price including taxes or excluding taxes. Usually customers prefer with tax included so they don't feel that there are surprises. And you do integrations as well in the way of payments, for example. These are all the integrations for payments available. Like I mentioned it before, I really recommend Stripe if you are using international. And you can have Alipay. You can have Stripe Alipay. You can even do WeChat in one point if you want to also offer this kind of payments for Chinese customers. And there you have it. This is our the very basics of your work. popular e-commerce platform is Amazon. And I know a lot of you have a lot of questions about Amazon and you really want to start this. So I'm going to walk you through about how to open your account if you're here in China. If you are going to open your Amazon account, 
you really need to have your business license. Shopify, as we saw in the previous unit, you can start a trial of your shop without having a license, but you will need a license for an account using Stripe or using PayPal. For Amazon, you do need to have your license in order to open the Amazon account. If you want to know about how to open your company in China, just click the button above and check the video of an interview that I did to a specialist, to an agent here in China that helps foreigners to open their own company. Once again, we're here on the Amazon website. Here's where you need to sign up in order to have your own shop. Let's sign up. All right. So once you open, like you register your email and you register your password, this is what the website is going to ask for you. And as you can see here, they need to ask you for a company registration number. So I'm going to input my business license here. Right now, the, you see Taiwan because when I started the shop, I have my VPN in Taiwan. But if you are in China, you will have China in here. Here you go. This is actually very, very long. You will have to have your personal information because they need to verify who you are. There you go. So this is something they will ask you, a global selling fee. You will be charged a professional selling fee subscription of 39.999. So if you compare this to the plans that we saw in Shopify, you will see that Shopify is actually cheaper probably when you're going to start. Where are you going to sell? Are you going to sell in North America? Are you going to register in Japan? Or you're going to do it in Europe? A lot of people do North America and Europe. You need to have a card. Now, this is very important. You cannot have debit card, okay? Some people have tried to use a debit card, but cannot. You need to add a credit card. If you have a credit card, you should be able to get charged. I'm not gonna open the full account. This is just for you to see the very basics that you need to have in order to open it. Once you have you added your credit card, you can go into your store. They will do a series of steps of verification that are very easy. You can start adding your products. Once you open your shop on Amazon, you need to choose the fulfillment method. And there are two types of fulfillment method that you can choose when you sell on Amazon. The fulfillment by Amazon or the fulfillment by merchant. What is the difference? Well, the key difference is who's responsible for the delivery and the management of all the products in inventory. If you do fulfillment by Amazon, that's the FBA. If you do fulfillment by merchants, that means that you're 100% responsible for the shipping of your products. I recommend you to use FBA if you are going to start. And why? Because Amazon will take care of all the logistics that it could be very, very complicated if you are starting. Once you select the market, like you saw, we selected the US or we selected North America or we selected Europe, you will choose the countries that you want to sell in Europe or the countries in North America. It could be Mexico, Canada, or the US. And you will ship an amount of products that you will have in your inventory. You will ship them to the fulfillment center in Amazon and they will receive it and they will take care of everything. Every time customer buys from your shop, the fulfillment center will be the one in charge of delivering this to your customer. So that's great because that's a lot of help that probably right now you don't have a lot of experience. And that's why a lot of people find Amazon FBA very appealing. Another key information that you need to know when you open your online online shop on Amazon is that you need to have a registration of your product. This will be key if you want to use Amazon FBA, you need to add your product information, right? And they also need to be able to track it. It's not just to ship the product. In order to get a universal code, a UPCS, that will provide you a SKU number. And this will be the numbers that Amazon will request from you so they can track your products when they are in the fulfillment center. Below, I gave you a little bit of information about it and the link where you can learn more about this. So, and this is it. You can just start selling. This is the very basics of how you can open your first Amazon account. I wanted to talk especially about payment processors because this is very, very, very important. And it's probably one of the things that a lot of people don't really think about when they start an e-commerce. And it's how your customers are going to pay you. If you're running an online shop, you really need to select the pro payment processor that is going to be able to handle the transactions that you want to have. 
and especially for the customers that you want to target. There are many different payment processors out there, and it can be overwhelmed to select. So how do you know which one is the right one for your business? So there are a few things, there are a few factors that you need to consider. The first is the fees. All of these ones have fees. PayPal, Stripe, WeChat, I'll pay all of these things. There are fees that they are going to charge for transaction. So you need to compare the fees that are going to charge you and check the best one for you. Some payment processors, they will charge you a monthly fee and some are going to charge you percentage over each transaction. A lot of people find it very, very useful to do per transaction a percentage because sometimes you don't have enough sales and paying a monthly fee can be quite tiresome. I use a Stripe and this is one I recommend because it's easy to use. The, the fee is much smaller than PayPal. But I also like PayPal and I recommend the PayPal in the past because they have very good customer services and they really have good policies about refunds. Usually the money that goes into your shop through PayPal, it stays there and it won't leave until you indicate otherwise. I always recommend to keep the money that a customer pay at least for 30 days. So you need to check all of this, the fees. The second thing is easy to use. Is it easy to use, not for yourself only, but also for your customer? Usually a lot of customers can drop purchasing something because when are going to pay online, it's very complicated for them. They, people right now only want to input the credit card information, probably their name and no event. So is it easy for your customer to use? And it's easier for you to navigate through the dashboard, to the reports, to all of this. So check which one is one that you're comfortable using. The second one is a safe. The security is key. Make sure that the payment processor you choose offers secure transactions. We, you have heard the news. There are a lot of scandals about data that has been stolen and you don't want any hackers come to your website and take advantage of your hard work. So look for features like encryption and fraud detection or in even insurance for this kind of situations. And the last factor that you need to consider when you choose a payment processor is customer services. If you have a problem with your payment, with processing a payment, you want to be able to get support 24-7. So you need to check that you have a, co a company that is going to give you this support because your customers might not want to wait. If you're doing a purchase and there is an issue, you want that issue to be solved fastest way. So I really suggest you to check on that. Once again, I recommend Stripe and PayPal because they have really good service. Of course, they have some issues, but on the market, these two are two of the best. Just make sure that your customers should be able to use the credit card, which gives you a little bit of a challenge here. Because you are based in China and your customers might be outside of China. How on earth they're going to pay you? Well, if you open your company in China and you use a Stripe or you use PayPal, they should be able to offer conversion services. So you need to calculate the exchange rate fee. It can be a little high, at least higher than in the bank, but this will help you to allow your customers that are not in China to be able to pay you through the credit card. Remember that you need a bank account in China and not a personal bank account. This does not count. You need to have an account for your company because remember that you need your business license in order to use this million dollar question. How to select products that will sell? This is a question that most of us have asked either when we're starting our business or when we're already kind of on the game. How do we make sure that the product that we're going to develop or that we want to offer to our customers, potential customers will actually be successful. There is no really a 100% guarantee that the product that you develop will sell. But there are certain things or certain steps that you can do to increase the chances of you having a successful product. So the first step, and it's the most obvious one, is to do research market. And this research market has to be based on your niche and your target, which is the customer that you want to sell to. This means that you really need to pay attention to their needs, to what they want, and the kind of products that they're interested in. You can, and you can do this by analyzing trends, looking at what is similar with businesses that are selling the products that you're interested in, like check the competition, read news. Once you disturb your target market and how they behave, you can start narrowing down to some options. So there are a few things that you can do. And so you can either see 
which products are very, very popular. And if there's some gaps in the market, offer products that will fill those gaps. I do want to say that it's not a bad thing that you see a lot of competitors out there. Because actually, this means that there is demand on the product that people want. The only thing that you need to do is to improve the product, to improve your service and offer something a little bit different. Because this means that you are finding products that are needed by looking what is trendy. Trendy on Shopify, trendy on Amazon FBA, trending even in, on eBay or any other marketplace in your country or the market that you're going to target. This is one way. The other way is to find something really unique something that you want to start. This can be a great way to stand out if you don't want to look like the rest of the competitors and you want to create your own brand. So look for something very specific. Just make sure though that there is there are somebody there that is going to buy it because it will be much harder for you to create a product that people will that you want people to need in the future than creating a product that people already need, right? Like you want something that people will buy right away. You don't want to wait too long. That's why we're doing online business. And if you're having still some trouble deciding after you do the research, I want to give you some free tools. You can check in the video below some of the free tools that you can use in order to find trending products. Now that you have found first and foremost, which product you want to sell, please, this is the best advice I can give you. Don't purchase any product until you know who your customer is going to be and if they're going to buy it. Once you have that, we will find the right suppliers for you. And you're in China. It is, you already have some advantage compared to other people. You already can go and visit your suppliers. You already can see and you can talk to them in real time. So take advantage of that and really try to do some sourcing. And sourcing might sound easy because there are a lot of people around you that probably are doing or they have done it, but actually it's not as easy as it looks like. It really needs for you to invest some time and try to get to know the product and try to get to know the supplier that you're doing. One of the best ways to find suppliers in China is to trade shows. Now that COVID restrictions are going down, I really suggest you to go and check the trade shows of the products that you're interested at. You can find this online, this information about when they are, what is going to happen, and the type of products that are going to show. Of course, one of the most famous trading shows is the Canton Fair. And the Canton Fair, I recommend for somebody that is really new and they want to go and see any trending products that they haven't been in the market yet and customers don't even know they're out there to check the signs, to check materials. And this is really a, tra a trade show for foreigners. So going check it out. You can do this online if you're far from Guangzhou, or you can go to Guangzhou if you're near and really explore the market. Take a day, go early, have lunch there, talk to them, see all the products and pay attention to what's going on in there. Another way to find suppliers in China is of course online. And you do this by using Alibaba, Made in China, HKTDC, or Global Sources. The two ones that I really recommend is Alibaba and Global Sources. And if you have, if you speak Chinese, then I definitely recommend you to use Yaoling Baba, which is the Alibaba Chinese version where you can find a lot of good suppliers. What is the key disadvantage of this one is that you will not be able to do drug shipping if that's what you want to do. If you want to do drug shipping, you can definitely use Alibaba or you can definitely use AliExpress. If you want to develop your product on your own and manage all the logistics, I recommend you to go on Alibaba for textiles and I recommend you to go on Global Sources for a lot of electronics. They're very good and you can set up meetings with the suppliers and get to know them. Just make sure that you follow certain steps in order to be safe. The first thing is that don't buy anything if you haven't talked to the supplier or visit the supplier. You need to, you need to ask for the business license. Make sure that they're legit. Negotiate the payment terms. Buy a sample. Don't place a purchase order without having a sample First, you want to know the quality of your products before you purchase them. Negotiate good payment terms. If you're doing drop shipping and you have this kind of negotiation and with this kind of supplier, well, you will pay before they ship. If you want to control everything, which I suggest, 30% during production, 70% after. If you don't have a warehousing, you can even negotiate that with the supplier if you have a long-term relationship. Once you start your online shop, you want to start promoting your products online. I said this before and I'm saying it again. Opening an online shop 
and not promoting it is like opening a physical shop in the middle of the desert. If you don't promote your products, if you don't promote your online shop or your business, nobody's going to be able to know what you're doing. You will not get customers. Doesn't matter how great your product it is. Doesn't matter how good the price is or the customer services. If you don't have a marketing plan, it's going to be a lot of work for you to get the right customers. The first thing that you really need to do, and I've been mentioning this, is that you need to find your need. You need to target your customer the right way. In the click below, I left a quick guide on having your customer avatar. A customer avatar is your ideal customer. Which customer will buy your product? Which customer will buy your service? And I want to walk you through something that is out there that you have probably encountered before, but you haven't noticed or you haven't found the right way to define it, but it has been used for a very long time on online business and is a sales funnel. So my goal is to help you to understand the sales, the basics of sales funnel. So you can start implementing your first marketing plan or you improve the current marketing plan that you're using if you haven't gotten any results. The first thing that you need to do for your marketing plan is to have a budget. How much money are you going to spend per month in promoting your business? Now, the first question that people ask is how much money should I spend on ads, either on Facebook, on Google, or Instagram in order to sell my product. And something that I recommend is like, if you are having a product that is going to sell probably for $100, you don't want to spend $100 on promoting it. You want to spend actually three or four times the sales price of that product because you are not only going to sell one unit, you are promoting to sell several units at once. For example, the proportion of the budget that you're going to have per month should be, if my product is $100, I will invest $500 a month on marketing to sell. And you check your breaking point. If you sell five products of those, you're already on your breaking even marketing plan. So you need to have your full monthly cost plus the, co the budget of your marketing to see how many units you need to sell in order to break even. And then how many units you need to sell in order to make a profit. I mean, when it comes to digital marketing, there are different strategies. You have SEO. SEO will be based on keyword. Like if you check my website, you will see that my website have a lot of keyword about e-commerce, online shop, and China, because that's my target. That's my services. I teach about e-commerce and product development with China. And that's why when you see my website it says sourcing, develop, and selling from China because that's what I focus on. So you need to see what are the things that you wanna focus on on your website. So your shop will have those keywords that will describe your services of your products. And these keywords, what they do is that when people or potential customers type on Google, Facebook, they will be able to find you or they should be able to find you. So the more the use of these keywords, the better it will be. And of course you have social media and according to your customer, your target customer should be the social media that you use. You have Facebook, you have Instagram, TikTok, WhatsApp, YouTube, you even have Snapchat, you have Pinterest, and you need to make content according to the platform that you're using. For example, on Facebook, you don't really post a lot of photos. You post probably videos that are longer than one minute. You maybe do some live events. You ask for reviews. It's for you to post also information and news about your business and your products. You can even have a blog that you can share the interest every time on Facebook. If you have Instagram, well, in Instagram, it's about photos, not about a lot of text. You want to post photos about your product, how your product look like, the product with your models. You want to show the product to your customers. And if you're doing YouTube, maybe on YouTube, you do a full video unboxing. These are very good marketing videos that you can do for your products. You can do video reviews. You can also do interviews with your customers. You can do challenges. You can do all kinds of content on YouTube. More importantly, you don't have to waste a lot of time creating content all the time. You can also select what kind of content you want to do, do a calendar and invest on ads. Once you have selected your customer profiling, your social media, now you need to create your plan. And that's how you're going to do your sales funnel. The, sell, the basics of a sales funnel is, first of all, you need to attract your customer, right? That's, for you. that's why ads are for. You probably have seen these ads 
on Facebook. And Facebook will only show you the ads of things that have been targeted because of your profile. It could be your location, your age, or even words that you have typed before. You need to offer a lead magnet when you attract your customer. You offer probably a coupon. And this, and a very good example of this is like, let's say McDonald's. McDonald's sometimes give free coupons for you to buy an ice cream. Well, this is a coupon that you see. You go to a McDonald's. And McDonald's expect you not only to get you free ice cream, but also will expect you to buy a hamburger and not only buying a hamburger, but also maybe add a soda with that. So you need to give them something, something that will encourage them to visit your website or something that will encourage them to purchase something because they perceive an added value to your service of your product. The second step is, of course, interacting with your customers. You need to be on social media. You need to send emails. You need to make live videos. They need to get to know you. There are a lot of people out there that have been scammed. And of course, customers are scared of this. So it's important that you show that you are legit, that you're trustworthy, and that you are offering a quality product or that you're expert on your topic. So we have attract interact and then conversion. And the conversion is when you have all of those followers or you have all of those potential customers and you turn them into buying customers, people that will actually buy your products, people that will really be interested in your services. And then finally, you turn those customers into fans. If you have done a good job with your sales funnel, with your product, with your service, with the way you interact with them, you answer their questions, you offer discounts, you offer refunds, you have good policies, good communication. Of course, people will be happy and they can, and they can give you a very positive review. And nowadays, reviews are key. People trust other people's opinions, and this is a powerful tool to promote your business. It's not only about all the ads that you put out there, it's also about the people that recommend your services. It was true in the past, and it's true now. They're a satisfied customer, we recommend to two or three friends, but an unsatisfied customer will complain with 10 people or more about this. And now it's even worse with social media. So make sure that you follow up with your customers. You have good communication and turn them into fans because they will be your biggest promoters. And that's the basics of a sales funnel. Attract, interact, convert, turn them into fans. Now that you have your plan in place, it's important to keep track of the results. Measure them. This will help you determine if it's really working or if it's not really working any of the offers that you're putting into place. There are different numbers of metrics that you need to track, such as website traffic, number of orders, number of customers, how many people are returning to buy again. All of these things are important things that you need to measure in order to understand if your marketing is successful and you're doing the right steps in order to have a successful business.